But when you come, when you, when you, when you live in a society that is, is, is embedded in the Christian mindset, it don't allow for any other thinking to, 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 to come across. You see, all of the other thinking is, them is, is stupid and irrelevant. So we hear th teachers now who is teaching comparative religion in a school. Kind of want to tell the students them say Hinduism and Buddhism and all this foolishness according to them. It's just some little foolish stories. What we must really center our mind on is Jesus Christ. Well, over the years, cutting edge, people cuss way and people said, well, all right, now we'll come down to our pan Christian them and thing. And Blessed love, my viewers and subscribers, well, go on, open all in good, open all in great. Now, my people, we're there again for the Soul Chat TV with another Mutabaraka content. And this one, my people, is different understanding of religions and different versions of the Bibles. So, my people, um, it seems like when most people become religious, it doesn't allow them or give them that mind to think out of the box or overall to have a different thinking and a different perspective of how things actually work religiously. It seems like they only stuck in one direction. They only facing this way and not looking at things that is happening around. That can be a serious problem. And black people. So we need for wake up. Yeah, man, we really need for wake up, my people. Let's watch this clip where Mutabaraka is explaining how oh, the devil was introduced to us and who is responsible for that. So it's get really interested, my people, and eat it. So you definitely want to stay tuned. So let's jump in it. And uh, before we go, you know, it's a black power movement. Definitely drop a like and subscribe. Share to a friend or a family so they can be a part of the movement. Now, my people, let's take a walk. So what we find now is that even though Christianity or they would say God allow Christians to live, but the, the, the Christians allow the devil to live. Because it is true, this doctrine of Christianity, why the devil is so prominent in our life. When, when Christianity introduced the opposite of God, because we must remember that in a Judaism, when something happened to Israel, they never blame it on the devil. They just say something them do. Why God has punished them? So God punish you. And certain things happen to you. There's a judgment that takes place against you by God. The Christians introduce an opposite to God, named the devil. So there is this continuous fight between the devil and God for power. So I would really declare that it's really Christianity allow the devil to maintain itself. Even though other people might say the devil did exist before any Christians. Well, the devil never exists in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a the Old Testament until Job. It come about in a Job. And they don't even know who write Job. But Job is really a very important story. Very important story to the whole idea of the strength of man and the perseverance of man still. But we see this new entity arrive in our psyche. And it has perpetuated itself in our psyche for 2,000 years. There's this devil that is really prevalent in our thinking and on our thoughts, that we even create ideas and concepts of the devil. But the reason why we are saying that is if we really go down into the idea of this month, December, why was December chosen to be the birth day? That specific day was chosen to be the birth day of Jesus Christ. We say it many times over and over and over. And we can't say it too much. We can't repeat the same thing too much because we have to keep repeating these things. You know? There is a reason why it was chosen. Now, most Christians, and most, I would say no, without any apology, most nowadays preacher who has never really studied theology, but claim that them get this 
Holy Spirit that is moving them. You know, people say the Holy Spirit moves you to say things and to do things. When it's really them after them own misunderstanding and guide themselves and claim, claim some supernatural divinity that is directing the course of them thinking. But when we look at most of the preachers them today who preach to the people, I will realize that a lot of them don't understand why were certain things chosen to be how it is. Because maybe if we had known why certain things was chosen to be what it is, we would have moved a certain way and would be thinking a different way and have a different perception and perspective about the self. And it's not too late, you know, we can't say, well, it's too late now, but it's not too late, you know, it's just who, whosoever is open enough to receive will really appreciate the information. Because when I tell her once, if we just take information and sup it so, like it's true, we have to say, evaluate the situation, I mean the information, and look and see if what is said makes any sense. And if you don't understand what is said, maybe you should go ask somebody who you feel. Because we see them at theological seminary there. They may invite you to the theological seminary a couple of times, about two times back, and we listen and we hear the people them who are studying to be theologians, who eventually become preachers of divinity in Christianity. And we realize that uh, even though them in the theological college, them don't want to open their mind to different perspective and understanding of different religions. Because theology don't mean Christianity. Theology is the study of the idea and concept of God, no matter what religion it is. Because theo is Greek. It's Greek, theo, God. You see, so it's, it's really like the study of God in a, a different facets of understanding. But when you come, when, when, when you live in a society that is, is, is embedded in the Christian mindset, it don't allow for any other thinking to, 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 to come across. You see, all of the other thinkings them is, is stupid and irrelevant. So we hear th teachers now who is teaching comparative religion in a school. Kind of want to tell the students them say Hinduism and Buddhism and all this foolishness according to them. It's just some little foolish stories. What we must really center our mind on is Jesus Christ. So there's no scope and no opening for the student to understand different perspectives or how different people see things outside of their environment. Well, over the years, cutting edge. People cuss way and people say, well, all right, now we come down to hard pan Christian them and thing. And I want to say, I hear Mr. Boy and I come down hard pan the Christian them too. <laughs> I hear Mr. Boy and I've got some internal, internal sweeping. Yeah, Mr. Boy, I will love you now, you know. Mr. Boy had some internal sweeping and sweep out himself totally now, you know. Because I want to say, the Christian them, more time, them not think. Them have emotions, but them not really think. Them not, them not reason. See, most of the things that with them is just emotion them use to reach a certain idea and understanding instead of reasoning. Because I come like so when a man become Christian, him stop reason. Him not reason out things, him not rationalize and him, him leave everything to God then. And not knowing say, boy, but the idea of God is inside of him and the whole the whole purpose of being, finding God is to find yourself. Not blindly finding the same because people don't look for themselves blindly. They say you have to have eye, you have to have a mirror to, you know, for find yourself. So when we hear all Ian going and lick out and I say, well, right now, him find say most of the Christian them in Jamaica, them not really have no rational intellect to really reason and come to a, a total understanding of what them believe in. 
So most of the times now you hear say it's we is the devil because we come on the radio without anything in our mouth and we just talk exactly how we see it and how we view it. And people feel say we're well, right now, we are some 80s, we are some this and we are some that. And we tell them all the while, say it's not that we don't believe in a God, it's just that we don't believe in the idea and the concept that was taught to us through the Christian faith. You see. The idea that them have about Yahweh and Elohim and Adonai and everything there. We don't really accept them concept there. Them concept there come through some irrational and sometimes illogical understanding of self that man should really give over. Like Santa Claus, when a woman, as we said last week, a woman spent 360 days at work to give her child a present. And then said that she tell the child that it's fair if she work hard and get the child a present. She put it in her socks and hang it on a tree and give it over to a big belly man named Santa Claus. So this lie perpetuated itself in our youth. Where you don't tell the youth, they don't tell a lie. You know. But the biggest lie is that Santa Claus come and give the little youth a present. So the Santa the youth become loving of this big belly man. Where every Christmas now you see them put him in a, a big chair. Red, red and white go on with that. And now you see even black people are dressed up that way there. You see, last week we talked to a brethren about the white Christmas, the, the song White Christmas, and him couldn't even comprehend the psychology of white Christmas and how white Christmas maintain itself in a, the idea that white is beautiful, white is pretty, and all these things. Him, him, him couldn't comprehend that. You see, him keep a rationalize that the, 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 the song don't make no mark difference in a no one's living and how them live. But it's a, it's, it's, it's a collectiveness we are dealing with and the perpetration of a certain ideology. And it linked the ideology of I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with Santa Claus. All of these things linked together. You know, see, not, we're not using it as just one facet or one asset of the thing. It's a totality, a sum total of a mindset that has been perpetuated on us for years through a European philosophy and ideology that it's very difficult for us to come out of it. Very difficult to come out of it. And a lot of these ideas is maintained through grandmothers and great-grandmothers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers who declare these days now as very corrupt days when it is because of those teaching perpetuating itself and what we call genetic memory where the child becomes a person even in the womb of the mother even in the womb of the mother the child is a person so the child is feeding from the mother the psychology as we said last week one of the ways them pacify the male resistance is to tie the father to 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 to, to what them call it yeah, tie up the father between two hours and make the mother, the pregnant woman, watch this cruel, inhuman action where they would put black people, black men, after whipping them 100 lashes, would have sprinkled salt in the wound them and make cat run over them back. This is documented. This is not my motor baruch has said. Documented. And make the, the pregnant woman watch. And this develop a certain psychology in a woman where if when her child born, in order not to make her child go through that kind of torture, she teach a child not to fight. She teach a child not to, to be a what you call a, a, a revolutionary. So it pacify the youth. So we can see all the, the fear. It's a love fear, you know. The love for the child, but the fear, the fear grip the mother so much that the mother don't really want her child to come out to fight against a system that is a cruel and unjust system. So when you start to wake up to this reality you now, you become a rebel without a cause because you are now rebelling against something and don't know why you're rebelling against it in, in a very unstructured way. You find a whole heap of people are rebel in a very unstructured way. You understand? So, why we are saying all of that is to come to the whole idea that it is very important 
that when we play certain things on the radio and, and, and we don't want we don't want a man just look and say Muta is a rasta. So him now listen. We are saying Muta is a person who are get information. And it depends on where you want to do with the information now. Because I don't listen and I gather and I throw away. Where I, I, where I don't want, I throw away. Where I want, I, I, I hold in my consciousness. So I am just passing this information to you now. And you must know what you want to do with the information. And we are saying, don't bother feel like say boy right now. You can't listen because you're done seeping and you're thinking already. Because, look here, man. It's a long road, man. Nobody can reach to the top of the mountain. Sometimes the mountain have to come to Muhammad still. And we are saying, knowledge is power. And you know, we and the Christian, they would get on quite okay if they just keep it in the faith. Yeah, if they just keep it in the faith, it would be so wonderful. Instead of going out there preaching like this thing here is physically real and not metaphysically real, you know, it's like these things that they believe in is a belief, it's faith. And I listen as you say, yeah, question a man faith, you know. Who is man for question the next man faith, you know, you know, question the faith. If them could have just keep it in the realms of faith, it would be so wonderful. Well, my people, you have made it to the end. As what Mutabark have said, knowledge is power. It really is. So I have to seek knowledge over any other thing. And this is where we find the true understanding of oh, most things come down. Don't be ignorant. Be open-minded. Open to learn. Look into things. Pick sense out of nonsense. And make it make sense. That is my view on this thing. Leave on the thoughts and opinion. I may hear one think. And you know it's a black power movement. Definitely drop a like and subscribe. Share to a friend or a family so they can be a part of the movement. Now my people, I'll catch you in the next one. Irene.